Hey guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoiler-free review for The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo. This was my Bibliothecary book pick for last month, so every month my Bibliothecary supporters get to vote in a poll for a book that I'll read, for video topics that I'll do. We have monthly live streams that are Patreon exclusive. We have a Discord group. We are doing watch-alongs of spooky movies. Uh, not like scary spooky, atmospheric movies this month, and a lot of other stuff. I have tarot readings, I have reviews of every single book that I read, so I'll link that on the screen if you're interested. But this is a standalone adult uh, Great Gatsby retelling, but this is told instead of the narrators of The Great Gatsby, this is told in Jordan Baker's POV, but in this book Jordan Baker is a Vietnamese adopted woman who is also bisexual, who is on sort of like the outside of everything going on with like Daisy and Jay and Nick and all of that. In addition to it being from a different perspective, it's also set in the same world, but there's magic as well. So there's demons sort of like on the outside of things, different kinds of magic, different kinds of sort of like magical creatures, but it's not obvious in the main point of the story. I would say it's one of those things where like magic's kind of around the corner, you're not quite sure what's metaphor and what's magic a lot of the time, but still ultimately being like the Great Gatsby story. So first off, I'll talk about the world building. Like I mentioned, this is a world that is set in the same time period, but there's magic. You still have that like high society life, the sort of like prohibition, all of that kind of stuff, like the flapper era, but then there's also this added magical twist. So for example, one of the drinks that they are actually drinking is demoniac, which is almost like, a, you know, cognac or whatever, but it's like demon blood. Um, there's definitely mentions of people being able to like make packs with demons, um, but you don't really see a lot of them. There's also different kinds of like magic and stuff where like I mentioned earlier, sometimes you're like, is this magic or is this like a metaphor? Is this really happening? There's magic about like making things out of inanimate objects become alive and things. So that's really cool, but I will say it wasn't used enough. But I wish that there would've been more of that because that stuff and that addition to the story was so much cooler and I wanted more of it. Next, I'm gonna talk about our characters. We still have the same characters and a lot of them are still the same kind of insufferable, but we do get Jordan, who I barely, I mean, I barely remember the Grey Gatsby from when I read it, but Jordan is definitely like a very minor side character in the original story. And here we get much more of her story. So we're not only getting the Gatsby stuff, but her backstory, her past, her other relationships, things like that, which was a cool addition. And it does give a little bit more life to not so much Gatsby, like he feels very distant in this, but maybe like Nick a little bit more and Daisy a little bit more. What's cool is that all the characters in here are queer, um, everybody. Uh, I would say almost everybody feels like if there was gonna be a label, they would all be probably bisexual, but it's not, there's no label. Um, but everybody is sort of like hooking up with everyone. And that's something that's always been like, sort of speculated within like Gatsby fandom stuff that like some of these people are in love with each other and so like you do have that added element here. But ultimately I think I'm gonna find these characters like fairly forgettable because they're characters that exist from another story. So it's really hard for these kind of like retelling stories for me to like really grasp onto the characters. Same thing is kind of true for the plot. So like I said, the plot is sort of a fusion of Jordan's story and a little bit of the magic and then the actual Great Gatsby plot still follows the same beats and everything. That was a little bit underwhelming, I guess I would say too, because with these magical things, I think there could have been more of a twist on it. Like we don't necessarily need to have followed the same stuff. And so some of the mundane things that happen in the Great Gatsby story, I was like, oh, I expect more of like a bang with that, you know, since there's like this magical element. Uh, so yeah, that was a little bit unsatisfying. But I still ultimately liked this. I think if you would all like The Great Gatsby, you will like this. I kind of like The Great Gatsby, like again, I haven't seen the movies or like read it in a long time, but I didn't hate it when I read it in high school. Not the best thing I've ever read, but still. So if you want something like that with a little bit more of a magical twist, you're a little bit more into historical fiction and things, you might enjoy this a little bit more than I even did. I gave this 3.75 out of five stars. So comment down below, let me know what you thought of The Chosen and the Beautiful. Thank you all for watching. I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.